Hey guys, welcome to the Shelby plant here in Las Vegas, and I'm here with Carl Whitman, and you are the chief engineer for Ford Performance, isn't that right? Yep, yep I am. And we're sitting here, standing here by uh, two 2020 Ford GT500s, uh, the street version, sort of, kind of, because they're both really track cars, right? Yep. And then the one with the track pack. And I'm going to pick your brain about these cars because I get to drive it tomorrow, but we thought we'd do this video ahead of time to kind of give you a preview of what you could buy pretty soon. So when does the car come out? Soon, right? Soon. So we're taking orders already yep. and uh, delivery before the end of the year easily. So on the standard car, the GT500 comes with, of course, 760 horsepower engine, dual clutch transmission with, you know, tremendously huge front rotors you know, six piston fixed calipers. And all that greatness is wrapped around this beautiful body that uh, the design team has given us. So on this... So what GT500 is about is about capability in a straight line, capability as a track car, and then capability as a street car to get to the track or get to the show. So what this vehicle has is uh, an additional package called a handling package which comes with splitter wickers so you can bolt those on and off and that gives you more downforce in the front it also comes on the back of the car comes out with a gurney flap that bolts on to our standard spoiler and that gives you a lot of downforce on the rear so it gives the customer the ability to set it up for the track they have um, either from the front or the rear and they can basically bolt those parts on and off and also comes, this particular vehicle comes with uh, the optional Recaro seats. So that's optional with, on the uh, standard car. Uh, so people can choose that uh, depending on their usage and, you know, general size. I want you to show them the inside. On the inside. Uh, again, the digital dash is standard on the GT500. Yeah, so let's talk about kind of where this fits into the Mustang hierarchy, right? This is the top dog. This is the big boy. This is the one with a top speed of 180 miles an hour. Yep. Um, and this is the one that, well, will make your hands sweat if you're not <laughs> in track mode, or if you are in track mode and you've turned everything off. But so first, you know, you've got the regular Mustang, right? Yep. The four-cylinder turbo. Yep. Then you step up to the GT. Well, you step up with two, three high-performance package in 2020, which is an RS motor. Yep. Then you step up to a base GT, yep. then a performance pack GT, yep. then a level 2 performance pack, yep. then a GT350, then a GT350R, then a standard 500, and then a 500 with a carbon fiber track package. Which is that one. Which is that one. And in case you're wondering, cost-wise, you're probably looking at about, what, seventy plus $73,000 yep. for you know a base Shelby GT500, and when you get to something like that, one hundred and six. dollars well, it's just eighteen thousand dollars more. Eighteen thousand dollars more, and the most expensive options we were talking are the stripes. Nope, those are less. Those are ten grand. Only, only. Okay, so what's the most ex most expensive option? The carbon fiber track pack. How much is that? Eighteen. So ten for the stripes, eighteen for the track pack, and we're looking at seven hundred and sixty horsepower and dual clutch transmission and and one heck of a chassis tuned around. How many air coolers? Seven. Seven intercoolers. Seven intercoolers that can take out 230 kilowatts of power. So what kind of tires? I mean, how, so yeah, well, how much how much rubber do you need to put that kind of power down? Yep, we got 305, 315s. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of tire out of both the PS4S for the standard car, and then let's take a look at this. Yeah. yeah. Um, we run exposed carbon fiber on this vehicle, so this is a carbon fiber track pack. Um, again, to feedback from the customers who have 350s that we painted black that they wanted to go to and exposed. It's set up with a cup tire, cup two tires to give you a ton of grip. Uh, the wing itself is exposed carbon fiber. The airfoil design is right off the GT4 race car. Uh, it's two position, so the street position, then you tilt it up and you get 550 pounds force of downforce at 180 miles an hour. Um, this also comes with the Recaro seat standard and uh, a rear seat delete. And that is the carbon fiber 
track pack. Um, it is the fastest one on the track. Uh, it's got a lot of grip due to the downforce and a lot of grip due to the tires themselves. So obviously this competes with the uh, Wide Buddy Hellcat. You don't think so, but you guys probably do. Uh, <laughs> the Camaro. <laughs> and maybe even, maybe even, it's like maybe even the upcoming uh, Corvette. Uh, of course you don't think so. <laughs> and we are going to, we can't talk about performance numbers. There's an embargo um, that Ford has make it fair for all the journalists to get their information out. So we're not going to talk about zero to 60 times or a quarter mile times, but those are coming on Tuesday. So stay tuned. We've got a full video showing this thing not only on the track, but also on the drag strip and maybe even comparing it to the old uh, GT500. So Carl, you've spent how many years developing this? Oh, if went by so quick, I yeah. could even say. It's just a joy to have the privilege to work on things like this. We only do GT500s, you know, once in a generation of the Mustang. So this is off the 6th gen, and so it is a vehicle that not only goes in straight line fast, but can outhandle a GT350R, so it's got to be better than its siblings. And, uh, you know, the other target car was, of course, the... Uh, the GT itself. So, so let, let's talk about the difference between the GT350 and the GT500. So that has a flat, flat plane crank, uh, but it doesn't have a supercharger. Correct. Naturally but, aspirated. Naturally aspirated. What's the difference in the engine? Let's open up the engine. Let's show them. Okay. Crazy. So GT500s come now with standard hood pins. As a track car, you want to make sure your head's not moving around when you're driving 150 miles an hour. So, uh, GT500, uh, it's built around a supercharger, so it's an Eaton 2.65 supercharger, delivering 760 horsepower with 10, 12 psi boost. Signed? Every engine is built at Romeo, yep. on signed by the individual hand built so. So does this go down the same uh, assembly line as a regular GT? No, so we build uh, both Shelby motors down the same line in Romeo niche lines. Yep. So all 350s and 500s are built on the same line. Uh, and they are all signed by the person who builds it. Um, and what's the difference in the engine besides the supercharger and the flat plane crank? The only thing that's the same between the two engines is the block okay. and the exhaust manifold. Everything else is different. Everything else is different. Uh, we run such a high cylinder pressure uh, on the uh, on the boosted motor. Uh, you have to change pistons because compression ratio changes, rods. It's a cross plane crank that can take the forces. Um, crank damper. If you look at the cylinder heads, the castings are the same. We still CNC machine them. You still got sodium filled exhaust valves, but you'll notice that it's an aluminum cover um, instead of a plastic cover on the valve train covers. I'm in the wrong place. It, it's a lot of aluminum on that thing. Okay. Uh, and so it's uh, it's a real race motor because of under the forced induction, we're trying to get as much horsepower per liter as we can. So it's like it's like almost 145 horsepower per liter out of it, which is pretty insane. Um, so all the details of that engine are to maintain its coolness while it's operating. So a lot of, with the heat exchangers, a lot when you look at the thermostat housing, um, it's all about airflow. There's a 92 millimeter bore throttle body on it. Um, it really just wants to be able to breathe, provide power and linearity. Uh, it gets peak power at 7,300 RPM, has a red line of 7,500. It's so pretty it's, incredible. It's, it's a high revving yeah, that's supercharger. A, that's, that's a high revving supercharger. <laughs> that's a lot. And you were telling me that because this is a track focused car, you actually have a jet pickup the, the fuel tank, right? You have two of yeah. them because when the car goes around a corner, I want to guarantee you have to feed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of power, needs a lot of a lot of energy to put back out. So we got to make sure the fuel tank is actually unique to this with high high flow pumps and uh, jet pumps again for the saddle tank to guarantee we've always got fuel flowing to it. Uh, and in, in you look under the hood, uh, everything's pretty much has to carry its weight and performance that goes into this car. So we run a magnesium tower to tower brace now uh, to get around the supercharger and still have the same strength. So that's new and you need to the 500. And then you look at the heat exchangers, every one of them's trying to get as much out of the air that's going through them. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of engineering for a lot of car. Yes, uh, to be the pinnacle, you've got to put everything on the line. How, how big are they? Let's look at the exhaust, because we were talking about those. Yeah. How big are those? It's four. 
four inch tips. Four, four, right? Four inch tips. Let's, why don't you go show it to him? Hold on, go show it to him. I, I could put my fist in there. Look at that. That's my fist. Yeah, dirty. That's a that's a big exhaust. You can change the exhaust mode, right? It's got yep. So it's exhaust. got active exhaust and good neighbor mode uh, because we still have that capability. Um, the exhaust system is, of course, quiet for good neighbor, normal sport, track, um, to get the maximum amount of flow on the track when you're running it. So uh, it, uh, it definitely, between that and the 1,000 watt audio system that you can get optional, it uh, not only creates noise, but you can sure have your own soundtrack with it. Now, now people have been already putting money down on these, yeah. right? And you haven't announced how many you're building, but it's a limited production. Tell me about that. Yeah, so what it really comes down to, since we're building 350 and 500s on the same line in Romeo, that is our constraint. So we're really down to how many motors we can build on the Romeo niche line. Um, so we have to manage that uh, between the two customers because we want to support both clients who uh, either want a manual with a high revving flat plane or a... Uh, yeah, and I think you said something important here, right? So if you want the GT500, only dual clutch. Yep. And what did you say, how fast does it shift? <laughs> 80 milliseconds. 80? Faster than you could deploy the clutch of a, of a manual, yeah. And the last generation GT500 had a manual yep. uh, and it was a very heavy clutch. It would have to be heavier now. Yeah, it would have to be heavier because more horsepower, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I want a manual. And I'm like, I think if you're going to get this car and you want to get the most performance out of it, it's not going to happen with a manual. No, you're going to leave a lot on the table. And that's what we learned with the GT. Uh, that you, we run a dual clutch in that, and that's really what you need for full track capability. And, uh, and this car can run with that kind of capability different approach with just brute force horsepower um, and, uh, but it's also so, got that great capability so, so you go and talk to a lot of the Ford Mustang customers right yep. and uh, you know this is the top of the line Mustang so how much are they gonna have to pay over sticker <laughs> to get one of these you know we have MSRP as the guide and yeah. our hope is always that they transact at MSRP which they don't <laughs> That's just the way it is in America. It's very competitive. Before we close this video out, uh, talk to you about the cooling, right? Because that, that's yeah. really hard. Will this car run all day around a track without going into limpo mode? Because so, so many other cars have yeah. had that issue. So we've done 10,000 miles of track time and thousands of hours and iterations on, uh, on the virtual world on the cooling system. So if you look at it, it's got twice the frontal area of a GT350 and 50% more airflow through the heat exchangers than a 350. So we're very confident you'll run out of gas before you overheat it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we get to take it on the track tomorrow. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And Alex, before we wrap this up, why don't you just give him one walk around to show him the inside so you guys can see this vehicle because it will be at certain four dealerships pretty soon, right? Pretty I soon. mean. You, there's certain ones that get the allocation and yep. there's certain ones that don't. So give them a walk around, then we'll close this up. I'm a big guy and I always have problems with Recaro's. They just pinch me. So, can I sit in it and try it? Go ahead. All right, let me see. So, you can get. Are they both Recaro's? The yeah, both are. Which okay. everyone you want to do? I'll try the. I'll try the. I'll try the. This one. All right, let's see what this is like. Oh, yeah, that's tight, dude. That is tight. It'll keep you in the, in the car when you pull a, a yeah. 1G lateral. Yeah, yeah. But luckily, you can get the regular seats. Yeah. So, if you're a big guy, you're going to have to go with the regular seats. But plenty of headroom, which, yeah. is, which, is, which is great. We're always big on Mustang for uh, daily driver capability and helmet capability. And I noticed this one doesn't have a rear seat. So, yep. what, what's the weight? How much do they weigh? Um, so this one's about, um, this one's 4,100 and change, and this one's about 4,000 and change. 
Are you looking forward to seeing the inevitable drag race between the Hellcat, the Corvette, the Camaro, and the new GT500? Yes, we're expecting it in the South sometime late this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, <laughs> I'm sure those videos will come out. And I, I, I know he hates when I talk about the competitors, but you guys benchmark these things, right? I'm not crazy. Uh, you actually, uh, we don't. You don't benchmark? You just go and do No, because uh, if you think about it, the target for this is so, so, so much between a 350R yeah. and a uh, and our GT Supercar. Yeah. So so you, you, you target your own competition. And, right. And that's the same transmission, right? This is the transmission of the GT. This is a transaxle? Yeah. Uh, different supplier. Yeah. So this one's totally new, but same general approach. Okay. And that's why, you know, we knew we had to get that immediate torque transfer in, you know, 80 milliseconds and have it be capable of different shift schedules for different modes from drag strip to track to sport to normal and that capability is is really what unlocks the potential of the 760 horsepower 625 foot pound torque without that you won't be able to get exactly the torque you need so nathan and i back in the day did one of those top gear like drag races where we took the old gt500 and went to aspen and saw if we could get there faster in a car or an airplane they yeah. flew uh, and it was a great highway car yeah put a huge smile on my face but as an everyday driver it was hard that clutch was really heavy so I'm really looking forward to seeing if this is actually has a bandwidth where yeah. you can drive to work and then yeah. you know race it on Sunday yeah. and sell it on Monday yeah <laughs> well guys thank you for joining us for this very impromptu video as always check out tflcar.com for more news views and of course real world reviews and on Tuesday we're gonna have a complete review of the new GT500, the Shelby, and let's, I think we'll do like an old versus new. You've got an old one, right? Yeah, old, but you can't drive it on the track. No, no, that's okay. We'll do it on the street. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. And Carl, thank you nice. for taking so much time with me. Really appreciate it. See you guys next time. Ciao.